Ever wondered why Apple makes so few products compared to all the competition? They have an incredibly popular brand. Why don't they attach it to as many products as possible? Sometimes they just seem to ignore some ideas that would make perfect sense on paper. Well, that's what I'm about to explain. Let's use an example. This is the Apple TV. One of Apple's most unconventional products. When it was first announced, it wasn't even called that. They wanted to name it ITV. You know, in continuity with the branding of all their other stuff. But the British objected. Luckily for them, mass production had not yet started, as up until then, they had only made a sneak peek of the thing. So they just ended up renaming it Apple TV. Nothing else could have stopped this promising new product from achieving insane success. It sold horribly. And so horribly, in fact, that even Steve Jobs himself had this to say about it. We sold a lot of them, but it's never been a huge hit. So they tried many things. Over the years, with the various iterations, they lowered the price by a lot, they added all the main features the users wanted, they even completely changed the OS and the user interaction, putting an emphasis on downloadable apps. They also changed the shape of the remote many times, but nothing really worked. The Apple TV never became a success. To some, it's because of its high price compared to the competition that can essentially do the same stuff. And yes, that may very well be the reason, but because of this, many believe Apple should just make a way cheaper and way less ambitious Apple TV stick, or Apple TV mini, akin to the Amazon Fire Stick or the Google Chromecast, only meant to do the basic stuff like YouTube and Netflix for a way lower price. But that's not going to happen, I think. And in this video, I'm not just talking about that one thing specifically, but also about their product creation process, aka how they decide whether something is worth making or not. The first reason is that a product like this, to actually have a chance against the competition, so to achieve the low price I mentioned before, would need to have very low margins. And this is just not something Apple will ever be okay with. Unlike other companies like Google or Amazon, Apple's revenue is mainly derived from hardware sales. Yes, they are starting to introduce some services recently, but they still make most of their money from physical products. This is one of the reasons why they try to make everything in-house, by the way, to avoid having to pay other companies. And it's also why their stuff always costs more than the competition, but they can afford to have high margins and high prices because of how people perceive their brand. Some of the things they sell may seem to be exceptions to the norm, like AirTags. Yes, they cost pretty much like all the competitors, but don't be fooled. For many use cases, you need to be able to attach them to stuff, which you cannot do by default. You'll have to buy an external keychain or loop or whatever for basically the same price of the AirTag, essentially doubling its price. Usually they try to justify the higher margins and higher prices with better software and the promise of a better experience in general. Yeah, Apple stuff is more expensive, but it just works. Everything is seamless and perfect, unlike the ugly competition, am I right? And that brings us to the second reason why they will not make a cheaper Apple TV. How would it be any different from the competition? Like, the entire point would just be to run YouTube, Netflix and similar apps, right? But is it really that different if you launch the Netflix app from TVOS compared to Google TV? The difference would only be the UI, which is one thing if you're talking about a phone or a smartwatch and a whole different thing if you're talking about a streaming box, where the UI is something you barely even see. And that's assuming they actually find some incredible new way to rethink the tvOS UI, because as of now, the difference really is only aesthetic. The closest they've got to rethinking that UI recently is with the new Siri remote, which has some cool gestures, kinda reminiscent of the iPad click wheel, but they are selling it separately on the remote for $60, which is already more than the Fire TV Stick or the Chromecast. To be fair, one way of lowering the cost could be to not even include a remote, as you could just use the one on the iPhone's control center. But still, what's the point then? It's an even worse user experience. I know what some of you are thinking right now, but it's Apple. They could make anything and people will buy it regardless just because of the logo. But as it should be very obvious by now, that's simply not true. This whole video exists because the Apple TV never sold well. Yes, despite the logo. And for a more recent example of something that quite possibly flopped even harder, the HomePod. Need I say more? It sold for $350. They were confident it would be a great success. They eventually dropped its price and then discontinued it. The various Alexas and Nest Home Minis, they sold much better. I simply don't see why it should go differently this time. But other than not being exactly a great product for the consumer, or for Apple, as they wouldn't be able to make much of a profit from it, there's one more problem which I think is actually the most important. Even assuming all the problems I talked about didn't exist, this product wouldn't last long. One of the things Apple has always been very good at historically, except for that period of time I guess, is focus. They know what to focus on. They don't get distracted by ideas that simply could make them some money today, because that isn't enough. 
they want money today and they want it tomorrow. They only make something if they believe it has the potential to become a big success for many years to come. Obviously, it doesn't work all the time, but if something doesn't even have this potential, according to them, they won't even bother with it. And what is the purpose of a streaming box really? Especially of a cheaper one. The point is just to turn a regular old TV into a smart TV. But nobody is even making regular TVs anymore. How many years do you think we have until old TVs are just smart by default? I don't think many. And at that point, yeah, streaming boxes will essentially become useless. Obviously though, all this stuff is just about the very beginning of Apple's product creation process. For some more insight, I think you might be interested in this other video next, where I cover other different aspects of it. Ciao!